the wrist. Greetings, I'm Shad, and yes, we are back to have a look at more ninja weapons, because there are so many to look at, but this time, I haven't even seen what we're going to be looking at. Nathan's collected a few, and they're just going to be dumped on me without any preparation, and who knows, I might have a heart attack. We will see. Now, we've done it before, so we're doing it again. It's a lot of fun, and as I said last time, being a mall ninja is just... One of those moments, things that you pass through on your path to true sword enthusiast, where you get into some bit more historically authentic, sharp, well-made carbon steel swords. Bit like that, right? Now, what is a mall ninja weapon? Well, briefly, I'll just describe it to you. Usually, they're very poorly made. They're not functional. They have a lot of spikes on them. And they're mainly there just for show and, uh, and to pose with. This sword here is a really interesting example in regards to the mall ninja ethos, right? It's not a mall ninja weapon, okay? Okay, it's a beautiful reproduction of an iconic fantasy sword. This is the sword of Andril, you know, Shards of Nasul, you know, Lord of the Rings. And it's a beautiful, beautiful reproduction, okay? This is not a mall ninja weapon because it's actually, in terms of its proportions, very functional and realistic to what, say, a medieval longsword slash war sword would be like. But, but you could look like a mall ninja depending on what you do with it. If you start to pose with it and you're not wearing something awesome and you look a bit cringe and you start to think that this is a functional sword even though it's stainless steel and would break when you hit stuff, you're acting like a mall ninja. And you've got to be careful about that. But, as I mentioned, it's just an area you pass through before you get into true sword enthusiasts. So we're going to be looking at some really awesome, when I say awesome, I mean cringe mall ninja weapons. But before we do that, I want to let you know that there's a way that you can get your hands on some awesome audiobooks, even Lord of the Rings, right, for free if you try Audible for 30 days, which is the sponsor of this video. All you have to do is go to www.audible.com forward slash Shadowversity, or if you're in the US, you text Shadowversity to 500-500 and you get to try Audible for free for 30 days, which gives you access to the Audible Plus catalog. This is a curated list of awesome audiobooks that you can just dive in, enjoy right away. And on top of that, there's Audible Originals that you can't get anywhere else. And we're not just talking about audiobooks, there's also self-help books, sleep tracks, podcasts. It's just a massive range of entertainment, which is so awesome and convenient. If you get the Audible app, you can listen to them on your phone when you're traveling and between devices, because if you have the app on another device, you can just open it up, pick up right where you left off on the audiobook that you were enjoying, and and if you haven't tried Lord of the Rings on audiobook, trust me, it is so good. It, it, it has aged beautifully and really is one of the best ways to enjoy Lord of the Rings currently instead of the other bits of media that are pretending to be Lord of the Rings out there. And you can try the first audiobook for Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Ring, absolutely free if you go to www.audible.com forward slash Shadowversity or if you're in the US, you text Shadowversity to 500 500 because you get your first audiobook free. It's a free credit. And by the way, the monthly subscription, which gives you a credit to pick a another audiobook each month is far cheaper than the actual cost of the audiobooks, okay? You can even get my audiobook, Chronicles of Evil Shadow of the Conqueror, for a fraction of the price and enjoy awesome audiobooks. I love them. I listen to them when I'm traveling, when I'm working with my hands, and then I just enjoy them so much I listen to them for fun because they're brilliant. It's one of the great entertainment mediums of the modern day. Go check it out, you won't be disappointed, and thank you for Audible for sponsoring this video. Okay, here is an interesting one, and if you have a look you can see the handle a little bit. Why would this qualify as a mall ninja weapon? It's kind of the colouring on the blade. It's The blade's there, over here, there, there's the blade. Uh, and also, like... <sighs> It isn't as bad as some that you can find, and you'll get a level of functionality out of it. The handle is a bit overdone, so if I just kind of step out of frame and ha have a look at that handle, right? It doesn't look like it would be too comfortable the way it's made, and just the kind of insets and indents and then the colouring, that would that's why, why this one qualifies as a mall ninja. It's not as bad as you can find, though. Let's see if we can find worse. Oh! <laughs> What the hell is this piece of crap? What the heck? How are you supposed to hold this? It's just like, it's like, I hold it there or something? Holy crap! Wow, that, all right, Nathan, you did good. This is a, this is a good find, because how are you supposed to use it? Where is the blade? Like, like is this the blade here? So it's supposed to kind of like, you know, cut, uh, I can get cut over here. I, and then you hold the weird hand thing down here. It's just like... The, <laughs> I, this is so bizarre, I have no idea how it's meant to be used. 
I mean, even that weird, you know, uh, like shark blade hand thing, at least kind of figure out how that would be used. I don't even know how this would be used. <laughs> what the hell is that? Oh my goodness, I don't, it doesn't even look good. Who would want to put that on a wall? It's confusing. It's hurting my brain. Oh, wow, I'm not sure we'll top that. Oh, I don't know about this. This is steampunk. Steampunk isn't more ninja. Look at that. That's kind of cool. And if the blade is sharp, it doesn't have super crazy bling on the blade. It's just got a pattern welded steel. And then this is more like, you know, a thematic steampunk knife. Uh, no, no, I'm not saying this is more ninja. It's wrong. <laughs> So, when you hear someone, he's like, are you loving it? Are you loving it? <laughs> Funnily enough, that might be functional, but it's so cringe, it is definitely Mole Ninja. This is absolutely. All right, look at this. This is, this is an interesting, interesting kind of piece in regards to like Mole Ninja, you know, connoisseuring, right? right? It, it is an example of an over the top fantasy, uh, Fantasy sword with spikes everywhere. Look at the spikes on the blade of this thing. So I said, look at the look at how big that is. This is most definitely like an awfully designed fantasy sword, and it will definitely become more ninja territory if you pick it up and you think you're cool. Like, oh, look at me holding it. And like with with, with this, you know, Lord of the Rings and drill, you get away with it because it's actually functional. And so this, like, it's so well made, you can't really call this a more ninja, but you can act like a more ninja with it, as I mentioned. But this one is so bad that when you pose with it and you think you look cool with this piece of crap, whoa, that's Mole Ninja. Absolutely. Ah, classic piece. I've seen daggers like this around the interwebs. And see how the blade is like split in two? I've heard some people claim that it's like, this creates like an air pocket that injects air into whoever whoever you stab, right? And it's really dangerous to kill it. It's like, that's so stupid. What do you, don't think you can't have air sometimes getting, and, and it wouldn't inject air either. Like, like if you're stabbing into something solid, it's just, it wouldn't, what, it would just create like one blade on either side. A anyway, it's, it would have some level of function, but it's overly designed. It's got like weird spikes. It's got like a split down the middle of the blade just to kind of look cool, but it's attempt to look cool ends up being really awkward functionally, which makes it cringe, which makes it crap. And it's a more ninja, more ninja knife. <laughs> Oh, what a glorious piece of crap. So see the spikes on the blade over here, over over on that end there, right? If you try to strike something, say pretend I'm holding that piece of crap and you struck something lower down on this blade, because it has these spikes, it'll just get caught and it'll be hard to like, you know, cut um, and do a draw cut or something like that. And uh, wow. Oh gosh, this looks so bad. And, Overly designed, once again, really weird cross guard. Look at the extra unneeded spikes and everything. The handle looks really bulbous. I wonder how big it is. Like, like how big would your hand have to be to kind of wrap around it and grab it there? I, oh, gosh. Now, I know for like, it's, it's for the cool factor, but this is when the cool factor goes way too far. You can have cool and functionality merged in an almost perfect, you know, thing. I, can't think of a good example, I don't know if it's like it, but you can do it. <laughs> <laughs> it's the Mole Ninja purse. <laughs> I don't even know how you would use it against someone, but I guess it would be hard for people to steal. It's like, oh, crap, crap, crap. like uh, it's defensive. This isn't for attacking. This is purely defensive to stop people stealing it. I see the logic, but wow. Total Mool Ninja purse, absolutely. Oh, this one is looking good. Look at this, look at the overly design. The, the metal on the blade is just so thick over here. And then you have this really, this would be really heavy, awkward to use. Lots of spikes on the blade in particular. Look down here, imagine trying to cut someone on this part of the blade. Oh, oh that's, a, that's a pretty good one. I still, I don't think we've bet, beat the hand blade thing yet. I'm not sure we will, but this does come close. <laughs> like, uh, uh, how are you supposed to wrap your hand? Because this part down here, right there, would like get caught on, on your hand and, and if you try and angle it, 
And how are you supposed to use it? There's so many, like look at these spikes, are you just supposed to jab? This is another one of those ones where it's hard to figure out how this is supposed to function. This is up there, this is close to the hand thing, but at least you can identify the handle on it. You can't identify the handle on the other one. But, oh, wow. Wow. I, you think, you know, they can't go further and you only find something like this. It's just, why? <laughs> I mean, it, it, it is so confusing functionally. I'm just left with, what's the purpose? How are you supposed to make, use this thing? Oh, this is, a, this is a video. Let's have a look here. <laughs> All right, at least we can see how it's used. Like, you know, like slicey. You grab, you grab the handle up here and you, and you do these slicey things. But you don't want to go up because those spikes will just get caught on things. Oh, but look at like the weird, you know, like foot there as well. <laughs> It's just, I don't know, sometimes people have weird ideas of cool, but then they add way too much cool on it. It's like, well, not, well we just won't have one spike. We're, like, if you just had to see that bottom spike, it's like, imagine that with a handle, but bigger. It would be so much more functional and usable. What if we add another spike, another spike, and oh, look at all the spikes! <laughs> okay, this uh, this is an interesting. One. I've seen uh, I've seen blade designs similar to this. Uh, the handle is new. This almost looks like a Kit Ray design. So if you look up like Kit Ray, he does these fantasy sword designs, and some aren't that bad. Some are exaggerated fantasy, and it's fine. This is where it go, goes really far. So there's a Kit Ray design that has like you know side spikes on the cross guard. And once it had just a regular leaf shaped blade and they added a blade kind of like this with like weird spikes and it just, oh my goodness, this is just, no, no, <laughs> you're already on the edge. <laughs> but now you just went way too far and we definitely see something like that with the blade. The cross guard, I'm not too, you know, critical. I mean, look, there's a big issue. See the spikes on like on this cross guard? They're pointing down. And so when you hold the sword, uh, those spikes are, you know, with a different, but poor angle jab right into you. And look how far the side spikes go down from there and there. Oh, you, you, you want to be careful with something like that. And so because of those spikes and because of the blade, yeah, this is definitely a more ninja sword. Okay. Not as bad as other ones that we've seen, uh, because they, it's got a bit of a knuckle bow, you know, knuckle guard, knuckle bow, with spikes on it, so you've got some punching action. What doesn't work well with this, see these kind of notches on the front of the blade? Usually, those types of notches are on the back of a blade to get a bit of a saw on the back edge, you know, like the classic Rambo knife. It's like someone thought, hey, those look cool, we'll just put them, and they, didn't, they forgot what they were meant to be used for, and they just put them on the front of the blade, which would be awful for a knife. <laughs> and so it's because of those notches there and the over-the-top kind of exaggerated fantasy elements, we got a all ninja knife. <laughs> oh, I'm done. I've got it. <laughs> oh my goodness. I've seen this. I think it appeared briefly, but not with the gun attachment. The gun attachment is new. Have you seen the guy where he poses like, you know, that with that one? We'll bring it up so you can see. It's like, he's like, oh. Total mole ninja pose. Uh, now this is upgrade. It's got a gun. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh wow. Oh wow. Oh. Oh. Ooh. The more I look at it, the more I want to gag. This thing is awful. Like, see the, the the really deep notches on the blade down here. How far down they go on the blade? Like, they're all the way up, right? That would really weaken the blade. Those are like thin points on the knife that would be that would concentrate any force that you impose upon the knife, causing him to snap. This is so uh, like such a piece of crap. This is awful. And then the handle is all the way down. Like, like usually you'd have a blade, you know, uh, protruding around here somewhere, but there's there's no blade. It's just like weird, overly designed hilt. And then we get blade all the way down here when the handle's all the way up here. What a, what a piece of crap. <laughs> People like to just add things to knuckle dusters. It's like, we could add, well, but this is like, hey, hey, before we saw the McDonald's symbol, but then there's like, what if we add one blade, but not two blades, not another, what if we had blades that, that, that run on the other, like on the other angle? Wow, it's amazing. Who thought that was a good idea? And if you don't know, the reason why multiple blades on like stabbing implements are bad, it's uh, 
separates the amount of force that you can put into a strike. And so when I thrust with a sword, right, all the force I'm putting is into right into that tip, which means the penetration of this tip would be better. If I suddenly have two blades with the same amount of force I'm thrusting in, suddenly that force is divided into two, and both of those tips won't penetrate as deeply. And you might be thinking, hey, if it just gets through the skin, you know, two cuts is better than one. But what if you have to get through something really thick, like armor? See the gambus that I'm wearing, or brigandine? But gambus, and there's a chance you could thrust through, but if the force is halved on both thrusting points, there's a chance that neither will penetrate, whereas if you combine that force onto a single thrusting point, there's a chance it will penetrate and you could incapacitate your opponent. And so this is why multiple blades, multiple spikes on, on thrusting things are bad. And look, I know there are examples where you have multiple kind of pronged thrusting implements, like the trident. You know why the trident has it? It's an evolution of um, a spear fishing kind of thing, and it has multiple prongs, so you have a higher chance of hitting a fish as it swims away. Um, and also to catch weapons and other things, and there's a reason why it didn't become a very common weapon, things like the trident. Oh, this is like a mole injury collection here. I mean, this knife, yeah, but <laughs> Out of all the like more ninja knives I've looked at, this is probably the most functional so far. It's just got a really, really weird handle. I don't know what's going on there. Uh, is that like supposed to be the horn of an animal? Uh, I don't look overly designed. I would almost give this one a pass, okay? It's not terrible. The blade, if it's good steel, it'll be, you know, decently functional. So, look, even the ones up here have the same kind of odd handles. Interesting. I. This one doesn't, this is, I've seen the making video of that. There's a, like, someone, I don't know, maybe this is like a copy of the video I saw, but I saw a video of someone actually making this, or, or something very similar to it. And it's, it's just a functional blade with like a pattern on to make it look like it's a feather. This isn't more Nathan. Oh, give it a break. Oh, wow. Oh, yes, we definitely, we got wrapping on the handle and we got wrapping on the, on the super. And then we got like, this one, not really. This one, fantasy. Uh, these ones are just bad fantasy, but oh, look at this glorious blader. Oh, we found a Mole Ninja Sword right here. Whoo, boy. Oh, look at the spikes on it. Look at the handle. It's like, like a weird thing separating your handle, which make it awkward to grip. Yeah, we got a Mole Ninja Sword. We got a video, final, final one. Let's have a look at this. Hang on, hang on. That's not Mole Ninja, that's awesome! That's wicked! That's really cool! I'm watching that again. Like, look at that, that's cool! I'm gonna get it! So I can get my Mole Ninja card back. I gotta give a special mention to the Batman double-bladed pocket knife, as was shown to me by Ryan on Friday Night Tights. Look at this, I have a Batman knife, hold on. There you go, look at that. That's pretty cool, right? <laughs> is, it, is, it, <laughs> is that the Batman and Robin <laughs> emblem? Are you kidding me, Robin? Come on! <laughs> this, is the only, I have, this is the only thing I have right here. Oh my goodness! <laughs> never leave, awful. never leave the cave really without shame. it. <laughs> what are you talking about? How can you Look, call yourself so yeah, double ended? Like, <laughs> if somebody comes at you from here, you can go here. If someone comes up behind you, can get them there. What's <laughs> <laughs> very kind of useful for defense? <laughs> but it's an aggressive weapon so, in a pinch, you can use it. So my, oh, oh, please do a video point. on that. Why is this a Mole Ninja weapon? It's a classic example of looks over substance. And this isn't to discount the possible validity of a double-ended knife. It's mainly in how impractical and uncomfortable the handle would be, the over-the-top bling, and style over substance mentality. Fake gold-coated blades, having odd ridges on the blade prioritizing a cool look over something genuinely designed for pure practical function. That's why this abomination is definitively a mall ninja weapon. And anyone who owns this should feel utterly ashamed. It's almost as bad as liking pineapple on pizza. It even looks like pineapple on pizza. See those golden blades? How could they live with themselves? Because, I mean, there are crimes against humanity, but this takes the cake. They should be charged with a war crime, exiled from the earth, cast into the sun. What possible manhood could they have left? Ugh, my heart goes out from them. At least they only sell for $10 online. I mean, pff, paying more than $10 for this piece of crap, what an embarrassment.
<laughs> I got it for nineteen. I got it for nineteen dollars. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna swap me out. Oh, whew, some of those Mall Ninja items gave me a heart attack. Oh, but we, we survived. We got through it. And seriously, Mall Ninja weapons are fun. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And of course, hope to see you here on the next video on Shadowversity. And until that time, farewell.